Happy New Year and welcome to the Falcon Focus Podcast. We're back after four weeks removed and glad to have you back with us. We're live on Facebook Live from 9.30 to 10 a.m. We are archived on cuwfalcons.com. Of course, you can download the audio thanks to Podbean and listen through iTunes. At least for the next few weeks with Winterholm here at Concordia. We'll be back at our old home here at the Student Union outside the, the Falcon's Nest. And on today's edition, it is a basketball-focused podcast as we talk women's basketball with Bailey Barker and we'll talk with Josh Howe on the men's basketball side they're coming off a victory last night in routing Dominican part of a busy stretch for the men's team the women's team will be in action tonight inside the John Book Fieldhouse against Concordia Chicago and so with that we welcome Bailey Barker to the podcast and first of all happy belated birthday it was your birthday yesterday did you do anything special for your b-day um practice practice and then went out to dinner so. Is, is that kind of the norm for you, especially the last number of years, you know, your birthday being in January, the basketball, usually a basketball activity going on, on on your birthday? Definitely. So when you look back at, at your birthdays, do you have a, you know, a favorite memory, a favorite gift, a favorite birthday party when you when you think back to all the birthdays you've had so far? Um, I think just going out to dinner with my family, spending it with them. You look in it, Christmas, New Year's, the holidays just passed. How, first of all, how were your holidays? Very good. What I think is, is, is awesome is, is you look at your bio, you have nine siblings. Mm-hmm. So during the holidays, well, what's it like in the Barker household? Well, it is pretty crazy. We all get together on Christmas. So all my siblings, and then I have two nieces and two nephews. Jeez. So Any it's pets? a lot. No pets right nope. now. Are they all living somewhat close to, what, your home in Oconomowoc? Yeah, um, Oconomowoc, Milwaukee, Waukesha. It's all pretty close. You look, obviously, nine athletes or nine uh, siblings. That's, that's a lot. When First of all, age-wise, I mean, is there, is there a big gap? Is there a big separation in age between all of you, or is it you guys um, all, well, all pretty close. close? My oldest brother is 32, and then my youngest sister is 16, so... All pretty close. So you kind of you, you kind of fit smack dab in the middle. I'm eighth, so I have okay. two younger sisters. <laughs> yeah. Athletically, all of them are athletes at one point or another. Um, most of them. A lot of my sisters ran track. Okay. Um, and then my um, one sister Emily, she did play basketball. So, but other than that, I'm the only one that has played basketball. No kidding. But my so, dad did also. So. So then, what, what was it like growing up? What, what, what did you guys do for fun? How hectic were times? Yeah, um, just playing a lot of games outside. I really enjoyed playing kickball with my siblings because okay. we had so many, so we had enough for a team. Yeah. So that was always fun. Well, I mean, you put in perspective, and there, there's 10 siblings with you included. There's 13 on the Concordia women's basketball team, so kind of put <laughs> that in perspective. But how did you guys get around? I mean, there's 10 of you. I mean, are you talking, are you talking a couple of vans? Are you talking? Yeah, we did have a big passenger van, and no my whole kidding. family speed skated. No so kidding. we would travel the country doing that. How did you got your family get involved in speed skating? Um, my I don't know. My parents just got involved. Um, there's a speed skating rink in Watertown, Wisconsin, and okay. that's where we originally lived. So we kind of got involved in that and then traveled the country competing. So that's something you got involved in then too? Yes, and I went to nationals a few times when I was younger. So that was always good. So then how do you go from speed skating to then obviously basketball now is, is, is your, your, your sport of choice. Mm-hmm. Was it always your, your sport of choice? Is it, is it something that you kind of, you know, got involved in later on? Yeah, I got involved in basketball in fifth grade, so it was a little later than most people, and then I kind of just fell in love with basketball and liked it a little bit more than skating, so I kind of chose that. So so what got you involved in basketball? Um, Actually, my dad was like, well, do you – there was, like, something at the YMCA when we were there, and he's like, oh, I think you should – play and then I joined the team at the YMCA so that was my first time and then I enjoyed it ever since. So is your dad would you, would you credit him as your biggest influence when it comes to basketball? Yes I would. What are some of the things that he's taught you throughout your your basketball life? Um, He's taught me a lot of lessons I guess throughout life and like one of the biggest ones that I think for me is like you're not going to play well every game mm-hmm. but like it's a lot more than just scoring. So if you're not scoring, like try to do other things to impact the game, whether it's really good defense or getting your teammates involved. So I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned from him. Was that a hard lesson to kind of take in at first? Because 
certainly as an athlete, you want to be the scorer. You want to be mm-hmm. the one that, that that's helping put your team in that position to win games. And when things are not going well, it, it, it's, it's sometimes hard to stay positive. Well, mm-hmm. Was that hard for you to, to kind of comprehend at first? Yes, at first. In high school, I think scoring was pretty easy for me, and I scored the most on my team. But coming into college, I mean, obviously – the girls are a lot bigger, a lot stronger, so you're not scoring as easily. And for me, that was a little frustrating because I kind of like, just like expected that to like trans, trans over. And it didn't for me, so I had to learn how to impact the game in other ways. And we'll talk about your impact on the Concordia women's basketball team in just a little bit. But I want to also go back to your days at Oconomowoc High School. You're, you were a raccoon, and mm-hmm. it, you look, you summarize, I guess, how would, how would you summarize your, your, your basketball, even softball career? Mm-hmm. Um. I would say overall it went pretty well. Um, my senior year we almost won conference, but okay. we had Beaver Dam in our conference, and they're obviously very <laughs> yep, good. Yep. So they actually beat us on a buzzer beater to win conference that year, which was pretty upsetting. But overall, I think my high school career was really good. Um, definitely learned a lot playing on varsity for three years. So Was, was Beaver Dam the big rival? Um. I would say for us, I don't know really for them if we were their rival, but definitely for us because they were so good. I've never, I never beat them in my high school career, so it was always like a challenge that I wanted to take to beat them. Got to watch out for the raccoons and the golden beavers. <laughs> Wisconsin Little Ten Conference no longer exists. Is, is mm-hmm. that kind of surreal for you? Obviously, you a number of years removed from your high school days, but mm-hmm. being in that conference, is it kind of surreal that it doesn't exist anymore? Yeah, longer? it is very weird that like when I left, then they um, changed to the Classic Eight, and I'm a little happy I wasn't there for the Classic Eight just because they are such a tough conference. But, yeah, just, like, hearing um, some of the girls from high school talk about, like, oh, we played Arrowhead, like, for conference. And I'm like, that is so weird. But it does make sense. They're obviously a lot closer, mm-hmm. those schools. But, yeah. How was the travel in the Wisconsin Little Tanks? I know in, in years past I used to hear, I don't, I don't know if it's coaches, maybe more parents, kind of complain that, okay, from one side to the other. I mean, there, there, for some schools, there was some serious travel involved. At that yeah, definitely. Um, I do remember a couple trips, obviously very long, and then also in the winter when it's very mm-hmm. snowing and stuff like that. So it was kind of difficult for some parents to get to trips, and I know that kind of was a problem. So it makes sense that they changed. And it, it mentioned you played softball. Was that always a sport that you were going to – attempt to play did it kind of just come about actually I started my freshman year of high school just to like have fun with it mm-hmm. and it was definitely very fun um, I caught onto it pretty quickly and my team was very fun but um, I didn't play my senior year just due to um, playing AAU and stuff mm-hmm. like that so it kind of got a little complicated with that now, you graduated Oconomowoc High School on the high honor roll, and I bring that up because it was just announced that for the Concordia women's basketball team, first semester GPA at 3.63, so not only is the women's team succeeding on the court, but in the classroom. What does that mean to you? Not not only, you know, you go back throughout your career and look mm-hmm. back at your success in the classroom at the high school level, but seeing not just yourself, but the entire team is excelling when it comes to studies. Yeah, I definitely think um, school is definitely something I – really enjoy and I like take that to heart to try to do my best in every aspect of my life so in in the classroom and on the court and I definitely think it's something that coach Brunner talks about Mm -hmm. like we are student athletes the student comes first so I think just like her being on that and all of us like on the same page with that so I think that's helped make us successful is there a big difference when it comes to your studies at the collegiate level versus high school as far as maybe the, 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 the man, the amount of work, the amount of time, or is it pretty similar? Um, I would definitely say it's very different in high school. Not that it was easy, but mm-hmm. it definitely you didn't have to put in as much work to get that good grade. And um, freshman year coming in, I realized, like, wow, I actually have to do, like, a lot outside of the classroom to be successful. And I'm guessing now is kind of a, a quiet time. I mean, obviously you have an opportunity to take winter. I don't know if you're mm-hmm. taking a winter one, but, but if nothing else, your focus is basketball. Yeah. Is that correct? I yes. mean, pretty much practicing games? Mm-hmm. I actually am doing an internship um, at a school in Wauwatosa to be nice. a school social worker. So okay. doing that a little bit during this time too. Okay, so still mm-hmm. juggling a little bit. Yep. Now, now basketball-wise, you look throughout your career, and as a freshman you're averaging about six points a game. Sophomore, about 10 points. By your junior year, about 10 points. This year, up to 13 points, but also over four assists a game. Have you been pleased with the progress you've made from a, from a playing standpoint from one year to the next? 
Uh, yes, I definitely think I have made a lot of progress and I give a lot of credit to Coach Brunner. Coming in, um, she has taught me like so much that I had no clue about basketball, mm-hmm. just like especially from a defensive standpoint, just like learning these new things and things like I never really thought about before on the basketball court. So I do give a lot of credit to her and then just me during the off season putting in a lot of work. Now, I, I do have to ask you, and it, it, it is Facebook official that, that you're dating Eric Kittle, who used to play for the Concordia men's basketball squad. I bring it up because... You know, you look at numbers, and there are a lot of similarities. His mm-hmm. average points per game went up year by year. By a senior year like yourself, the assists were, were up there as well. Does he help you? Does he, does he give you advice? Does he critique your game at all? Do you guys play one-on-one? Yes, I definitely think he has helped my game a lot um, throughout, like, these last couple of years. Um, I think because we are very similar, obviously, we're both very small, and that kind of is hard for me, like, on the court. So getting that advice from him on, like, how he went through that and just, like, shooting in the gym with him has definitely helped me. Yeah, he finished with 1,541 points, 6.3 assists per game by his senior year. Coming into this season, we had Coach Brunner Jones on, on our podcast a few weeks back, and she said on the podcast, we will really rely a lot on Bailey Barker. When you, when you hear that, coming into this, your senior year, was that kind of – you kind of expect that? Did, did you know there's going to be a lot of – I don't know if pressure is the right word, but expectations would be there as far mm-hmm. as you being one of the two seniors on this, what is otherwise a younger roster? Yes, I definitely expected that, especially after losing uh, Audrey and Bree last year when they were our two captains and they did a lot for our team. So, yeah, just I knew I had to step up, um, become more of a leader, become more of a scorer or anything that my team needed for me. Right now, the team sits with seven victories and four defeats, six and two in conference play, and all of a sudden, you know, life at home for once. And was that was that challenging? The first what four games, six of the first seven away from the John Book Field House. Did, did it get old after a while? Getting on a coach bus, it seemed like day after day after day. Yeah, definitely. It was kind of weird to have that many away games, especially when we were in school also. Sure. That was a little tough for um, a lot of us. But, yeah, you kind of just got used to it. It was like, oh, another away game. But now it's really nice playing at home. 1-3 straight now by 44-20-21, taking it to the opposition, hoping for more of that again tonight against Concordia Chicago. But but how has this team come together? I mentioned that there are five freshmen, there are four sophomores, there are a couple of juniors, there are only a couple of seniors here, one of those seniors. Mm-hmm. Do you, have you seen, you know, maybe from day one to now, have you seen, you know, I'll, I'll use the word progress again. Have you seen mm-hmm. that progress, the team coming even closer and closer together? Yeah, I've definitely seen that progress from day one till now. Um, actually, at the beginning of our season, we sat down as a team and kind of talked about, like, what our new identity is going to be. Because it has changed so much, it's not like we can just throw into the post, get into Audrey Aubrey, and they mm-hmm. score. So I definitely think we've talked about that as a team, how we want to be fast or we want to be quicker. We can take those threes because we have a lot of good shooters. So kind of talking about our identity and then working on that in practice and seeing that progress like day after day. And I definitely think like we're starting to click a lot better. It's hard to mm-hmm. click when a lot of girls haven't played much or because really it was only me, Ari, and Clara who got minutes last year from the returners. So definitely um, like in practice, doing those things to kind of, help us now to get to know you a little bit better a series of questions kind of rapid fire in case we haven't gotten to know you already with your dating life and your 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 sibling (laughs) situation but favorite food um pasta favorite music uh taylor swift do you have a outside of taylor swift do you have a favorite type of music uh probably pop okay favorite movie or type of movie i love man on fire because i love denzel washington (laughs) now do you guys watch a lot of movies on, on bus trips um, yeah, Still? we do. Okay. Some of our longer trips, we um, watch movies, or we have somebody on the way home sing a song. Sing a song. Yeah, like Expl- our freshmen. That. Our freshmen actually on our away trips. Um, one time they have to sing a song, and okay. they usually have headphones in, so they can't hear themselves sing. That's okay. <laughs> so that's always fun to have. Did you have to do that? I did have to do that, and I sang um, "Party in the USA" by Miley okay. Cyrus. You want to sing it for us now? No, it's okay. Now, now, do you have any say <laughs> in what movies are watched on the bus? Um, I mean, I would you are say one of the we, seniors now. I mean, you yeah. have a whole little rank here. Yeah, we do take a vote. Um, one of our freshmen actually has a lot of movies, so we kind of just take a vote on which one we okay. want. Special or secret talent? Um, I would say, I guess, speed skating. Nobody really knows that yeah. I do that. Do you have any nicknames or a nickname? Um, 
a lot of my teammates call me like Bay or Bales or. Just stuff based like on that. your name. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Place you'd most like to visit that maybe you haven't already with your basketball travels. Um. I would say. Like in the United States or anywhere. Anywhere. Um. I really want to go to Egypt okay. just because of all the history, but okay. I would like to go back to Italy again. I went there last year. Okay. So. What is your major in? I know you kind of touched on it a little bit uh -huh. with your internship. Yeah, my major is social work, and then so I will graduate um, in the spring. Okay. And then I applied to UW-Milwaukee for school social work, so I'm hoping to get into that. So then finally, in this rapid-fire question, your dream job? You know? Um, I would love to be work in... Um, a school just doing school social work and helping kids out. All right. Mm -hmm. well, let's wrap it up by previewing tonight's matchup inside the John Book Fieldhouse, 7 o'clock in Cordia, Chicago. The opponent, the Cougars, four victories, eight defeats. They're four and five in conference play, and the Falcons, they won down there over Concordia, Chicago, 68-35 to 35 back on the, the 27th of November, and, and Bailey at 20 points, six assists, three steals. Kind of preview the game a little bit. What can fans expect if they come out to the John Book Fieldhouse tonight? Um, I definitely think we're going to bring a lot of energy. I think it's going to be a fast-tempoed game, and we're going to get the win. Yeah, you guys are playing with a lot of confidence right now, so we <laughs> hope that's the case. Bailey, thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you tonight at John Book Fieldhouse. Thank you. When we come back on the Falcon Focus podcast, we switch gears to men's basketball, and we'll talk with senior Josh Howe. The Student Personnel Administration in Higher Education, or SPAHI, program at Concordia University is designed for people who want to work in the university setting in any department. So if you're interested in working in academic advising, campus activities, residence life, admissions, financial aid. This program is really designed for anyone interested in those areas. The mission of Concordia is to help students develop in mind, body, and spirit. And that was really evident in the program. I really enjoyed that I could be in class one night and take what I learned and apply it on the job the very next day. My name is Amber Schiesel and I am a SPAHI graduate. Welcome back to the Falcon Focus Podcast. Great to be back here in 2019. And again, we are back at our old home. We're out in the uh, student union outside the Falcon's Nest and we'll be for the next couple of weeks here during Winter Home. And you can join us on Tuesdays from 9.30 to 10. We're live on Facebook Live. Again, archived on cwfalcons.com. Download the audio thanks to Podbean. Listen through iTunes. From women's basketball, and we thank Bailey Barker for her time as she gets ready for tonight's game against Concordia Chicago. We turn our attention to men's basketball, fresh off a victory last night down in River Forest, Illinois, as they were across the street from CUC and knocked off Dominican 92-52, in which our guest Josh Howell coming through with a game-high uh, 21 point. First of all, what time did you guys get back from, from Dominican last night? Uh, traffic wasn't too bad on the way back, okay. so I think we got back around 11, 11.30, so, so better than I was expecting. Did you get much sleep? Uh, no, it's really hard to sleep on coach buses. So. I was going to say, a guy like yourself, I mean, is there a secret to trying to get comfortable, trying to get any kind of shut eye on a bus? Um, I really, I, I don't give much effort to it just because it's kind of a lost cause trying to sleep <laughs> on those buses, but like when we went out to Sioux Falls or when we went out to uh, Concordia, Nebraska, your best bet is to sleep on the floor underneath the seats. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> otherwise it's going to be a tough, tough one. So usually, usually I get a nap in before the bus ride or sleep in or something like that. So you're looking forward to Ann Arbor then in a couple of weeks, the, the bus trip for CIT. It's, it won't be as bad as Concordia Seward. That's <laughs> no, I, that, that's, yeah. How were your holidays? Uh, they were awesome. Uh, I got to see family. We got, we got a good break uh, for Christmas, so that was really nice before we had to come back. So what is, name one of maybe your, your top gifts you received. What, what, what's one of the top gifts you, you, you gave this, this holiday season? Uh, one of the top gifts I received, I got a new tackle box. So I got a really okay. nice tackle box. Um, so that was good. And then one of, the, one of my favorite gifts that I gave was uh, I bought my sister a Love Your Melon uh, beanie. Okay. And like half of the, I think like half of the proceeds go to like uh, brain cancer or Very some nice. research. So uh, I thought that was a cool gift that I got my sister. Absolutely. Yeah. Now you mentioned some, some time off, and there were 11 days at least between game action, between a game here and a game against UW Oshkosh. So as you mentioned, you got to spend some quality time at back at home. Now – when you get an off day, when there's no basketball-related activity, for you, what's the, what's the ideal day? If, if you could have an off day, 
and it's it's done your way, what's the ideal day off? Yeah, I don't I don't know if I truly ever really have an off day, but it, if I had to explain it, it'd be getting up or like getting up, sleeping in a little bit, um, and then having a cup of coffee, getting a good breakfast, and at least coming in to shoot for an hour, uh, or get get my legs moving, get a lift in, stuff like that. So uh, there really aren't many off days um when it comes to being a college athlete but uh and then a lot of it has like now a lot of it will have to do with like recovery so like staying off my feet and um getting good rest and stuff like that do you have your cup of coffee today i did not have it today no. I, I had to get here pretty quickly so <laughs> I did i'm, not so, I'm have sorry today. about that no it's okay it's okay. now after some time off from game action and like like mentioned you had 11 days in between games is it sometimes challenging you know you get quality time back at home is it sometimes challenging to get kind of back in the swing of things yeah, it, it was just kind of the perfect storm going into that Oshkosh game with having those days off and then having those early practices and then running into a top, I think, a top three team in the nation. So, um, and then I, I think that was a good learning experience for us too. Like we know, we've seen the gold standard now in D3. Mm-hmm. Like we know what, what it takes. Um, but yeah, it, it is a little bit tough, but our coaches do a good job when we do come back from those breaks to get our legs moving and get us up and down, get a conditioning back a little bit, stuff like that. Well, I don't know if it's if it's a coincidence or what, but you know we had Bailey on from Oconomowoc. You're from Slinger High School, so we're, we're kind of taking it back to those kinds of little ten conference. But you remember the honor roll all four of, of your years at Slinger High School. What was your favorite subject? Uh, math, definitely, and uh, it's one of the reasons I'm going to be a math teacher. So. No kidding. Yeah. Now, how high up did you get as far as math goes? Um. Well, Some here, of us here, over here are still stuck at Algebra B. Yeah, yeah. So here I got up to Calc 2 and Discrete Mathematics. Uh, high school, I, I think I just took the normal the normal path. I don't think I went into any uh, AP classes or anything like that. Now, you played football and basketball. So for the Slinger Owls, who was, who was your big rival? Uh, probably Hartford. Hartford? Yeah. So right down 10 minutes down the road in Highway 60. Plus, uh, my family kind of lived in Hartford a little bit. Okay. So. Um, we had people around us that went to Hartford, so it was it was interesting. That, but that was definitely our biggest rival. At least in your time there, how did the Owls do against the Orioles? Uh, I, we dominated. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, uh, it was it was good back and forth. Basketball and football, we usually had the edge, but they were good at other sports. So. When you look back at your playing days there, do you have a favorite game, favorite memory, favorite series of games that, that stand um, out? So one of the games that really stands out is my senior year against Oconomowoc at Oconomowoc. Uh, we were down, two, we were down, we were down one, and we got a shot for our, our, our probably our best player, and he he missed it off the rim, and I went for the putback, and I got pushed, and I got two shots with no time on the clock, so I, I had two free throws with no time on the clock, and I made them both, so it's kind of like a walk off free throw, and that that was that was one of the coolest moments. Uh, in my career there. How much pressure is that? I mean, it, it, it's a lot going on in your mind at that moment. I mean, you telling yourself, hey, I can win the game. Yeah. There's no clock. Everyone's watching me. Or, or do you just take a deep breath and not let that stuff distract you? Um, I, I kind of just uh, take a deep breath. I don't really let it distract me. It was a little bit different, though, because nobody was on the free throw line because there's no time. Everybody was on the benches. Everybody was uh, yelling and screaming. And once I made the first one, the second one was easy because there's no, there's no pressure on the second one. Worst case scenario, we'd go to overtime. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I just try to block that stuff out. You then came to Concordia your first year, 2015-16. You, you played 12 games. Coming in, was that kind of the expectation that you'd have to kind of wait your time? Was was that an adjustment you had to make? Was that an ongoing conversation you had with Coach Cassidy throughout your freshman year? Yeah, looking at uh, – when I was looking at colleges, I wanted to go somewhere where I would play as much as I could. Um, I didn't want to go somewhere and sit around until my junior or senior year before mm-hmm. I'd get playing time. And I, I was frustrated in my freshman year when I came in, and I really wasn't playing meaningful minutes. And then I looked, and then I kind of stepped back and looked around, and like, we got some really good seniors. Like, we got some. We're like, ten, twelve deep without, without me and without the other freshmen. And then it also helped with like Noah and Jake and Andrew. Andrew was playing a little bit more than us, but especially with those three, just like, looking at each other and going, our time will come. Like, we we have a lot of seniors on our this team, and eventually we like our time will come so it was easier we kind of just stuck together and stuck it out was that I guess an emotional roller coaster though your freshman year just try I guess tr- trying to accept what your role was at least at that moment but knowing that your time would come you just have to stick it out and then continue to put the work in yeah it, it was a little bit but then when I when I was real with myself I'm like I, I if they put me on the floor right now mm-hmm. I I wouldn't be ready to play like that's kind of how like the, the guys they're putting on the floor are better than I was at that point and I I found that out pretty quickly so we embraced our roles on the scout team which we ended up having a lot of fun with like hey you're the best player you get to shoot every time 
because you're from Aurora or whatever. So so we, we embraced our role, and then we just had a lot of fun on the bench too. And mm-hmm. um, I mean, like I said, we knew our time was coming, so we you got to put in that work before um, it pays off later. So then what did you do in the off season between your freshman and sophomore year because you absolutely exploded on scene in year number two? Yeah, um, it was the first summer. I, I've always just been naturally gifted athletically, and it was I've never really worked at any sport over a summer. I mean, I've lifted weights, I did little workouts, but I never was in the gym for two hours every every single day. And between my freshman and sophomore year, I'm like, man, I want to play. Like, I don't want to I don't want to sit on the bench a whole nother year. So I was, I mean, I lifted for an hour every day. I shot for at least an hour every day, maybe maybe come in twice for two hours. And um, I mean, that, that was the first summer I really put in a ton of work and I went and played open gyms wherever I could and stuff like that. You've been all conference now, back to back years. How has your confidence grown over the last number of seasons? Um, it, it it has grown a lot. I've never been somebody who's lacked confidence, so um, so I've never really had an issue with that. But like something that just like sticks out is like in the semifinal game at Aurora, my sophomore year, Coach Cassidy looked at me in the huddle, and our play was so that we could get Kittle downhill to the hoop, and he's like, if Kittle throws it to you, shoot the ball, like. And I was like, okay, like that's that sticks out to me. That like they have confidence that I will, I will take shots and make shots. So that that helps a lot. P- other people having confidence in me. I do have to mention, I love this show because it's come full circle. We've talked about Oconomowoc in both uh, segments. We've talked about Eric Kittle now in both segments. <laughs> but uh, okay, so you mentioned your all conference back to back years. Have you had to maybe reinvent yourself a little bit offensively? Because okay, your sophomore year, maybe you're a secret around the conference, but. As that season's going along, everyone's now starting to focus on you a little bit more. And, and now, as, as, as your time's gone along, you're a focal point for opposing defenses. Have you, have you had to reinvent yourself a little bit offensively? Have you had to get a little more creative to offset that? Yeah, especially like my sophomore year, bringing it back to Eric, there was so much attention on him that there was just no pressure on me. Like, I just went out there and shot the ball, and I was getting open looks because nobody, like you said, nobody knew who I was. And then coming into junior year, that's, that's when I really had to – and I've, I've always taken pride, and my dad has always uh, instilled it in me to be able to score in mm-hmm. different ways, whether it's getting to the hoop, shooting threes, posting up, getting out in transition, offensive rebounding. So it, it really takes a combination of all those things. And I, I, I tried to make myself into a player that can do all those things. Um, so that's really kind of been the biggest step because, I mean – I don't, I don't get as many open looks now. Like uh, People don't just kind of lose me. There's always somebody glued next to me uh, on defense. So um, there's, it's definitely been an adjustment to find different ways to score. How much fun has this senior year been as far as experiences go? You guys began with an exhibition game against Milwaukee and right there with the Panthers throughout and actually beating them at halftime. Uh, you look three ranked opponents already and facing Platteville, Whitewater, Oshkosh. At Oshkosh game, getting the opportunity to play at the G League, Wisconsin Herd Home, the, the Menominee Nation Arena. How much fun has, has this first part of the season been with some of these experiences and, and opportunities? Yeah, I mean, like I said about the Oshkosh game, like we've seen the gold standard at D3 now. Like we know what it takes, and we were, we were competitive in all those games but one, and we could have won uh, two of those games. Um, and then the Milwaukee game is just a cool experience. We had that my sophomore year too, and that's always fun to. It's kind of a measuring stick to see where you are against those guys and see how big those guys actually are. But uh, I think it prepared us a lot for conference. I think it's kind of or conference, and I think it's jump started our our conference uh, our record uh, so far because we see we've played teams that are huge and fast and strong, and then we we bring the same level of intensity to our conference games, and we're playing well right now. Saturday, of course, you joined the 1,000-point club, 17th member to do so in Falcon men's basketball history. First of all, what does that mean to you, and did you ever you know, expect to hit that, especially after only playing so many games your freshman year? Yeah, um, it, it, was, it was nice because I, I never got it in high school, so I never got that experience in high school. Um, and I don't know, I, it's always been kind of in the back of my head as a goal, but I've never really fixated on it. And then it just kind of like snuck up on me this year and uh, – and my dad's my dad's a big stat guy and a big math guy, so he was always kind of letting me know where I was, and I just kind of like, yeah, don't I don't I don't need to hear it, like don't tell me. And uh, I, it started I think it started getting at me a little bit, um, and I started struggling a little bit, but it is it is relieving to get it, and um, it's nice to get it, like I said, because I never got it in high school. It's almost like an NBA schedule right now for you guys too, because not only did you play Saturday, but then you played last night, the makeup game from November at the Minican. You play Wednesday, you play Saturday, you play Tuesday. 
Especially with no school going on right now outside of Winter Realm. Is this kind of a nice start? Do you like, you know, the nonstop game action? Yeah, absolutely. It's, like you said, like an NBA schedule, like practice, play, practice, play. And I, I talked about this in a post-game interview. It's just kind of like wake up, shoot, lunch, practice, coffee. go to bed, coffee. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then we got a, we got games every other day. So uh, practice is really right now is really about like tweaking what we can do better and then moving on to the next game. Well, moving on to the next thing, rapid fire quickly. Uh, some questions to get to know Josh Howell even better. Favorite food? Uh, barbecue pizza. Barbecue chicken pizza, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Favorite favorite music? Favorite music? Uh, I, I listen to everything, but if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be country. Is that your go-to to pump you up before a game? No, I, I usually I usually change it to rap or hip-hop or something like that. Okay. Do you have a pregame routine? Um, not really. I Just kind of when we're at home – uh, getting that, getting lunch in, and then getting into the athletic training room hour before warm ups or something like that. Any hobbies? Uh, I love fishing. Uh, I love being outdoors. Um, yeah. Do you get out a lot? I mean, even how about this winter where it's been it's been nice. It's <laughs> yeah. been warmer than it has in, in I, years past. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no ice to go ice fishing, so okay. that's that's been a little bit disappointing. But uh, I, I don't get out much during the basketball season anyway, so I'll take the nice weather right now. Any hidden talents? Um. I don't know, probably not. Uh, pretty good at video games. Uh, Favorite video to, game? Uh, right now it's got to be Fortnite. But okay. Yeah. yeah. Nickname? Nicknames? Uh, probably just Howl. Just a lot of people call me Howl. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody screw that up? Does that get screwed uh, up a lot? They used to. They okay. used to. Not, not so much anymore. Top athletic moment so far? Um, well, that's tough. You mean here? Anywhere. Uh, I, I probably, well, it's my senior year of high school, we went to, we were one game away from state in football and basketball. So okay. that was playing in those environments and in those games was really cool. So best sporting event you've ever attended or you've watched. Oh, I don't even know. Well, first thing that jumped into my mind, I don't know when is when the Packers played the Vikings last season and lost like 24, nothing. That was probably the worst sporting event I've ever, <laughs> att- <laughs> ever attended. Cause it was like negative 20 wind chill. Um, Probably, Jeez. probably maybe two or th- uh, two or three years ago when the Bucks played the Raptors in the first round, mm-hmm. and they just like dominated. I'm like, it was like sixty to twenty eight at one point or something like that. It was just crazy. And um, I've been to a couple of Bucks playoff games, so all those have been. Have you been to the cool. new arena yet? I haven't been to the new arena okay. yet. If you weren't playing basketball, what sport would you be playing? Football. No question. Yeah, football. Was yeah. that was that a struggle at all? You know, getting ready for college, basketball, <sighs> football. Was it always a hey, basketball and then football? It was always tough because. My dad likes to say I was better at football than I was at basketball, but I never really liked getting hit, which probably made me a good wide receiver because I didn't like getting hit. So, um, but I was—I always thought I was a little bit. But I've, I've always wanted to play college basketball. It's always kind of been a dream of mine. So, yeah, it's always kind of been on that road. Um, but I, I also love football too. All right. Well, to bring it back to Concordia. Wrap it up. Eight victories, four defeats right now for the men's basketball squad. Eight and one in conference play. Three and one at home. Winners of three consecutive up next Wednesday, 7 o'clock against Concordia Chicago at the John Book Fieldhouse. You guys knocked off the Cougars 95-86 back on the 20th of November, in which Josh came through with, with 24 points. Preview the matchup for us. Again, what can fans expect on Wednesday if they come out to the men's game? Uh, we're playing really well right now, uh, and Concordia Chicago always brings their best against us. So it should be it should be a shootout. It should be a good game. Uh, hopefully we can limit them offensively and uh, um, get away with the win. And also a big doubleheader coming up on Saturday for the women and the men against Aurora at the John Book Field. Check out twfalcons.com for more information. Josh, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Thanks to Bailey Barker, Josh Shaw, our entire crew. Matt Middle saying so long for now. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll talk again next Tuesday for the Falcon Focus Podcast.